Hello? 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 This is Tom from Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures. How's everybody doing today? This is a positive and great day today. We're alive. I'm sunny hot. It is 34 degrees Celsius where I'm at right now. Maybe it feels like 138 degrees Celsius. It is one hot day out there. It's so hot out there you could boil an egg on the concrete. Maybe five eggs on a concrete. Today I want to talk about what, what do you have control over your life? Do you have control over every given situation? No, nobody has control over everything. But I want to talk about this today. Control in the Philippines, control in the U.S. People often talk to me and ask me. I just did the video, as you know, about banking. And so people say, what kind of control do you have? You have control over nothing. Not one thing here in the Philippines. You have no control. You you have control over yourself and how you can dress yourself. Other than that, you have no control on the visa, on banking, on anything that you get. You have no control on solving any problems. You have no control of talking to people, helping get through the situations. You have no control over anything. And I don't think anybody really does. But in a certain extent, I want to at least say this. For example, if you're outside the country, say you're in um, say you're in Turkey or say you're in uh, uh, the United States or uh, any country in the world. What kind of control do you have as a foreigner? Well, in the United States, you're a local citizen, you're a citizen of the United States of America, you're born and raised there. You have control over a lot of things in your life. You have control over, well, at least I can fight for my rights if I actually go to court. I can fight for saying uh, I did not speed in that light. I did was not driving the car. That traffic light did this to me. Can you do that here? No. If you're going to get a ticket, you have to pay it. There's no fight. If you're walking jaywalking here and you get a jaywalking ticket, which I almost did a dozen times or more, can I fight that? No. You have to pay the ticket. Can I fight it in the States? Yes. You have control over your life. You can fight that. Do it. Can I, can I fight the aspect of them taking money out of my bank here at Ruth's bank account? Can I fight that? Well, yeah, you can. You can fight it up to a certain extent, but you have no control on what exactly will happen. In the States, you have certain control that eventually you will get your money back if it was misappropriated or if it was taken. Here, because of the way things are, uh, with maybe the situations that the, the person's in financially, maybe the branch manager, or whomever that actually took that money, it's gone, it's gone. Will they reimburse you for that money? No. No. When you purchase something here as far as items and fencing, for an example, I bought fencing. It's supposed to be in uh, 16 foot lengths. 16 feet per roll. Some of them were 8, some of them were 10, some of them were 12, some like 3 were 16 feet. Chain link fencing. So I went back and had the 8 and 10. Sir, it's yours. I'm sorry. That's the way they cut it. That's the way it is. You have no recourse on any of the fencing. Once you buy it, it's yours. Sorry. Done. Bye-bye. So you have no recourse over it. In the States, yes, you have recourse over something that you purchase. Clothes, for example. Oh, I'm so sorry. These shoes don't fit. Well, here you buy it. Sorry. You should have tried it on spot. Instead of ordering it online, you should have done, done this and done that. In the States, as you know, we can take it back to Walmart or we can take it back to wherever. And someone will make it right. So there is control over those things, for an example. And for example, also, you're going to the doctor here. Do you have control on uh, what doctors see, who you can see? Can you see your regular doctor? Here, they don't, pers they don't really have what they call, they have doctors. This is one doctor sees everybody, or one person sees everybody. Now, you can go to the hospital and qu request to see this particular doctor because you like this doctor. But on the other hand, depending on how busy he is, you may never get to see him. Even in the States, you can have a hard time seeing your doctor. But if he's your regular doctor, you can call up Sally Joe and say, Hey, Sally Joe, schedule me an appointment next month. Well, he's not available. He's available in three months. Okay, so three months from now. Whatever. The, the control thing, what happens is you find yourself in a situation where here, for example, you're limited on what you can do and fight any circumstance. For example, I bought a car from someone 
that, that I bought that van and I'm driving it off the lot and I noticed the battery was really weak. It's just a weak battery. And they told me they put a new battery in it. You don't know, want to know what I had to fight to get that new battery put back in my van before I drove it off after I bought it. Well, at the time, so what happened from the time I bought it, we had to leave and go get some money. From the time I got back, they took the new battery out put an old battery in, trying to keep the new battery. Well, when I went to start, I said, what happened to the battery? It's a brand new battery. Oh, nothing's wrong. As I turned on lights and leave lot, I said, I got it. there's a way you can check it. You stop and rev up the motor. So as I'm doing that, I find myself, wait, this is a bad battery. This is a bad battery. It's not, it's, it's not going to charge up. So I had to fight to get that battery back. In the States, you could just go back and say, hey, this is a bad battery. Check it, whatever, whatever. I just bought it. Here's the receipt. There's so many things you just got to be prepared for. Another example, we did the survey on this property, and we're, we're the surveyor's marking the stakes. I said, if you don't mind me asking, it seems like you're doing that all wrong. Do, do you have a post hole digger? No, we don't have such things as that here. You know, with a post hole, they said, no, we don't have that here. I said, okay, why don't you do it this way? Well, come to find out, I'm losing the way he was doing it. I'm losing two feet to three feet on his markings. And I said, why are you cutting me off two, three feet? He said, because right away, and I said, oh, right away is over here. Why are, you, why are you going back another two or three feet and say, this is my property? So come to find out, they were doing it wrong. So he says, well, I got the big guy. Okay, come over here. What, what's he doing? He says, you're right. He's doing it wrong. Well, you know, you got to. So in the States, for example, you hope they're doing it right, and you, you think they're doing it right, but at least you can have some type of control over it. You can actually take the blueprint and you can map it out yourself and figure it out. Or the survey, the site survey from Google. Here, for example, you're out of luck. Once that thing is done on that blueprint and on that piece of paper, you're done forever. You lost that piece of land forever. So you really have to think about it before you uh, do things and say drop money into the, here. If a guy says to me, well, I take my Social Security check and I drop it here, and I've been dropping my money here for years and never had a problem. Well, I understand that. Well, I have. you may never have a problem, but if you do, will you get your money back? 99% of the time, you don't because somebody either took it or stole it or whatever. A prime example of this, we talked about in your book the other day. Ruth said, hey, I had got my uh, yearbook done. Uh, it was fine. I had it here. And everything was fine, but people couldn't pay the money. And the ones could pay the money, they ended up paying the money, and the person took off with the money. Well, if that happened in the States, we'll still get our yearbooks. Someone took off with the money, but you don't let another student hold on to the money to begin with. RR is the class, uh, class president, or treasurer, I'm sorry, and she holds anywhere from, I'd say, a couple hundred dollars, and her, carries it in her purse all the time. I said, don't carry that money around. Why would they give somebody that's 12, 14 years old, well, 14 now, uh, a responsibility of carrying that money around and carrying that money back and forth, back and forth to school, where it's been, it's actually, some's been stolen out of it because the students, you know, that's there, and then they take money out of it. But, but as you can see, you often wonder to yourselves the thought process that gets people to the point, and it makes you wonder, like, why, why are they doing it that way? Why do they do things? But it's outside the United States. We're used to being controlled and have control and ability to control a lot of our things. We can at least know that we, we buy something, we can take it back and get repaired. We can get something repaired and we have rights that, that will allow us to fight for that and at least do it. Are we losing our rights? Yes. But we're losing, you ought to be here when you try to get something done and get it done properly. Now a lot of guys will probably disagree with me on this video. But on the other hand is, I want you to really think about what you have as far as a person and what you can do and what you can't do. Now, a lot of guys say, hey, I, I can go sit out here on a porch and drink beer all day. Well, there's a new law out. You can't drink on your porch anymore here. You, can't, you cannot have a party with alcohol out close to the highway. If you do, you can get put in jail now. Here, for an example, where you, like you have a pub or a bar in the States, they didn't have a sidewalk and they'd be lined full of alcohol and drinking on the, on the, on the, on the sidewalk.
But here you cannot do that. Not anymore. And there are certain... If I get mad at uh, Joey over there, Joey, come on. You know, you're not doing a good thing over there. Come on, Joey. And get on him and yell and scream at him. At least I know that he's not going to go down here, for example, and put a smudge on my name because they can do that now. Joey can put a smudge on my name and cause me to get a, uh, blacklisted or a mark on my name for the NBI. So you got to be very careful when you're outside the United States. And I'm saying this to the guys. Please be very careful on your actions and what you do. So many guys are getting themselves in trouble because of sarcasm and the words and of your normal habits that uh, people don't really see that it's a positive way. God bless everybody. And sorry, sorry, it may seem like I'm rambling on. It could be. And I'll watch this video again and make sure it's not rambling on so much negativity. But I'm just telling it like it is. God bless.